Creating a functional and attractive footer inside WordPress can be somewhat of a challenge, especially for beginners. So today my focus is to share how anyone can use one of my favorite visual page builders to simply create a footer inside WordPress in just a few minutes. Okay, so just quickly before we go ahead and launch into this WordPress footer tutorial, consider subscribing if you haven't done so already or if you're new to this channel, and that way you'll stay updated with actionable videos and tutorials designed to equip you with the skills, knowledge, and tools to help your small business thrive online. And with that having note out of the way, let's go ahead and build a stunning footer for your WordPress website. Okay, so let's go ahead and build a WordPress footer using the Divi theme. Now, if you're completely new to using the Divi theme, what I'll do is add a beginner's tutorial up above and down below in the description, which will help you get up and running with Divi. This Divi theme tutorial will help you install and set up the Divi theme and show you step by step how you can use the Divi page builder to create your website pages. Okay, so make sure you check out that Divi theme tutorial for beginners if you're completely new to Divi. Okay, so inside the back end of my WordPress website, what we're going to do is navigate up to my website so we can view the front end. This is what our website currently looks like using the Divi theme. This is a template that we chose in the previous template tutorial that I just shared. Now down here and by default with the Divi theme, once you install the Divi theme, your footer will look like this and this current default footer will be the same on each of our website pages. Okay, so how can we actually customize our footer with the Divi theme? Well, what we're going to do is navigate back over to the back end of our WordPress website. Then simply navigate down to Divi and locate Theme Builder. Then within the Divi theme builder, what we can do is navigate down to add global footer. And this is where we can create a global footer that will appear at the bottom of every page of our website. Simply go ahead and click on add global footer and then click on build global footer. Simply navigate up to add new row, then come down and click on this four row option. However, depending on the type of footer that you want to create, you can choose a different number of rows. Okay, so before I insert my first module, what I'm going to do is close this and then add a color to the section background of my footer. To do that, navigate up to the section settings and a editing window will pop up. Now you can drag this anywhere that you like and you can also make it smaller depending on your preferences. Okay, so let's navigate over to background and we can add a plain background color. We can also add a gradient an image, video, as well as these other options like a pattern or background mask. I'm just going to navigate over to background color and then add a background color. I'm going to click on this blue color and then click up here and make it slightly darker. Okay, so I'm happy with this background color. Then simply come down and click on the green tick when you're happy with the background of your footer section. Next, what we're gonna do is navigate up to the row within our section, our footer section. And what we're gonna do is start adding our modules. Simply click here. And the first module that we want to add is a text module. And here's the module that I want to add. And here, what we wanna do is add our business name. And as you can see, I've added Stu's Consulting. Now I'm gonna leave the formatting as it is and then navigate up to design. Come down and click on text and then navigate down the page. And what we're gonna do is locate text color, click here and then select light. Then I'm going to navigate back up to text size and make the text size larger. I'm happy with size 20. And actually what I'm going to do is head back to content, then text, and then navigate down and highlight this name and bold this text. I can also head back to design and then text again. And I can change the text font if I like based on the font that I'm using on my website. For now, I'm going to keep the default font. Now what we want to do is add four more headers. I'm going to add useful links, quick access, and get in touch because we want to make our footer responsive and functional. To do that, all I'm going to do is come down and click on this green tick and then navigate back up to this first module and we want to duplicate this module. Then come down and I'm going to duplicate again and then one last time. Then all I need to do is click on each of these modules and place them along here. I'm going to do the same here, drag that over here, and then this final module. And these are my footer headings. I'm going to click on this gear icon and change this footer heading to useful links. Then what I'm going to do is also do the same with this heading over here and change this to quick access. And again, one last time, I'm going to navigate up here, click on settings, and then add get in touch. And I'm happy with this. 
Then what we're going to do is navigate up to this module and add another text module below this heading module. Again, locate text. Here's the text module. And within this row, what we want to do is add a brief description about our business. And I'm happy with that. Again, you can play around with the formatting if you like. Then navigate up to design, then text and navigate down the page and locate text color and change this to light. Next, what we're going to do is navigate down and click on this green tick. Then navigate over to this text box and duplicate and then drag this box over to this row over here. Then what we're going to do is click on settings and then come down and here I want to add some useful links. So these are useful links that my website visitors can click on and that's going to take them to the appropriate resource. I'm going to navigate up to tutorials. Then what we can do is add a link by navigating up to link and add the destination URL. And as you can see, this is the tutorials URL. So if a visitor clicks on this link tutorials, that's going to take them to this tutorials page on our website. Then come down and click OK. Then come down and do the same with each of these links. As you can see, I've quickly added the destination link for ebook. So what you want to do is quickly navigate through the process of adding your useful links down here. Now, once you've added those links in here, simply highlight and I'm going to click bold, then navigate over to design and text and then click on this link option here, then navigate down the page and here you can choose the link color. I'm going to change this back to white. You can also make other changes down here if you like. For example, I could navigate down here and add a bit of shadow, but I'm going to remove this and then click on the green tick and then navigate up to these quick links, these useful links, and then click on duplicate. And that's going to duplicate this module. Then I'm going to simply drag this module and place it below quick access. And again, I'm going to click settings and then come down and change these links here. These might be the primary website pages that your website visitors can see in your primary menu. So as you can see, I've gone ahead and added my primary menu items. This is going to help with user navigation on our website from our footer. Again, what you want to do is highlight each item, navigate over to link, and then add the appropriate link under URL. As you can see, the destination for this link is the about us page. So take the time to insert each link, the appropriate link for each of these pages. For us, I'm going to quickly go ahead and add the destination link for blog services and contact. Okay, so I'm going to move this module over here, make it smaller, I'm happy with that, and then click on the screen tick. Again, I'm going to navigate up here and duplicate this module and then come down and drag this module over to get in touch and under get in touch. Then again, we're going to click on settings and this time I'm going to navigate down here and add email and phone number. And as you can see, I've quickly added email and phone and what we want to do is make the email clickable by simply copying the email and then clicking on link. And then for the URL, what we want to do is add mail to, then colon, and then add your email and then click OK. Now, if a website visitor clicks on this email, that's going to open up their email inbox where they can quickly compose an email and send it to your email. We also want to come down and do something similar to the phone number. Again, simply click on link. And this time we're going to add tell colon and then your phone number and then click on OK. And again, when a website visitor clicks on this phone number inside your header and from their phone, what that's going to do is allow them to call directly to your number. OK, then what I'm going to do after making those spaces is add underline and underline. Next, I'm going to close this and then navigate up here and click on add and type in social and then click on social media follow. And here you want to add all your business's social media channels. Here you can choose the social media channel. I'm going to choose YouTube. And then what you would do is add your YouTube link in here, your account URL. And then if we click on back, we can simply come down and add a new social media channel. I'm going to add Instagram. Then again, you'd come down and add the link for your Instagram account or other social media account. Then you also have the option to come down and click on background. And you can change the color of each of your social media icons if you like. I could click yellow, blue, orange, or I can completely remove the background. Now what I want to do is remove the background for each of these social media channels because I want my footer to be minimalistic. So I'm going to head back and click on this item here, come down and click on remove and then also for Facebook. And I'm happy with that. 
Now, once you've made any changes, come down and click on save. Next, what I'm gonna do is navigate up here and then click here and then add a regular section. Click on forward and then locate text. Here's the text module. Then navigate over to settings, then design, come down to spacing and under padding, what we're gonna do is add zero and then zero again. Then head to content, come down to background and this time I'm going to add this black color and then this green tick. I'm happy with that. Now what we're gonna do is click on the widget settings. Remember this is a text widget and then come down and this time I want to add my business name, then Alt G, copyright 2024. Then I'm going to add terms and conditions and then privacy policy. Okay, so let's move this editing box over here. Then what you would do is if you have a terms and conditions page, then go ahead and link that page. You'd also do the same with your privacy policy. Simply go ahead and link that privacy policy page. Now I'm going to center align and then head over to design, text, scroll down, and locate text color and change this to light. And I'm happy with that. I'm going to click tick and then save. You can also navigate up here and change the padding of this section. I'm happy with that. Now you also want to preview what your footer looks like on different devices. Here we have the desktop view, then we have the tablet view, and then we also have the mobile view here. So you can see I don't need to make any changes to my footer. It's responsive across devices. Now what I could do is add a logo instead. So for example, what I can do is click on add new module, type in image, click on this image, and then upload a logo. Here's the logo that I want to use, and then click on upload image, then save changes. And all I would do is remove this module by clicking delete module. If I click on this module here again, come over to design, and then spacing, I can simply change the margins or padding. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Then come down and click on save. And that is how you can create a minimalist footer for your WordPress website using Divi. Okay, so let's exit out of this. Then make sure your global footer is visible. Then go ahead and click on your website. And as you can see, if we navigate down to the bottom of any of our website pages, you will see this footer that we just created. And that is it for this beginner's tutorial showing you how to create a simple footer for your WordPress website using Divi. And there we have it guys, that is it for this brief WordPress footer tutorial for beginners. Now if you have any questions about this tutorial, make sure to pop them down below. And with that said, thank you so much for watching this tutorial all the way through to the end. If you got value, make sure you leave a like and subscribe. And that way I'll see you in the next video. Take care everyone.